the sun came out after a couple of days of well, a kind of miserable weather uh, in getting towards the middle of the May so still not particularly uh, this is a handy car park right here uh, just one pound uh, yeah. Spring Cuckoo and the rounded hill of Mulvra. Okay, there's, this is where the tarmac lane ends, there's the entrance to the car park. And uh, it goes into uh, with, uh, this gravel track which leads up to Hillin Bodlin. That's my destination today. Well, quite a long way up there, right at the head of the Skeffin Valley. And when I was a kid, the parents used to take us uh, on the annual holiday to Talibant. And this was the walk they used to do, generally, while they were up here. This walk all the way up to Hinbodlin. Uh, a long walk. Uh, they weren't keen walkers, but they did the occasional walk. And, uh, yeah, so... And it's a... Well, there's nothing spectacular about this walk, it's uh, just a walk basically into the wilderness, uh, the Welsh wilderness. There's Mulver again, that will be a general feature of this walk, going up and coming down. And ahead of me is the Llolech Ridge, which all runs all the way down to Barmouth. And uh, behind me, of course, I'll get the Cardigan Bay. Now it's patchy cloud today, but uh, it really, basically, it's ideal walking conditions. Okay, uh, there's some walkers walking their dogs. I did pass another guy as well, walking his dog. But I have an idea I won't meet anyone else up here. Basically, well, I've been maybe a little over a mile on this walk, uh, and I've got, got to, well, uh, uh, a long way to go, really. Uh, it's going to be a several-hour walk, most most of the day. And there's the rounded hill again of Mulvera. And uh, when I first came here at the age of 10, in the early 1950s, or around about 1950, I think, um, yeah, I noticed that hill from the, the campsite by the beach as a kid and also noticed that line of uh, trees there uh, which was already there 70 years ago and uh, hasn't been touched by the loggers. So uh, that's a, uh, yeah, well, just a little uh, kind of piece of, uh, well, not exactly essential information, but there up there I think is um, uh, let's see if I get this right. Uh, Diffwiz, yeah. Diffwiz, the uh, second highest mountain in the Rinnig Range, uh, which I climbed not long ago and put on video. Okay, at this point, I join up with the Ardidwi Way. There, the Ardidwi Way, you can see that. I'm right underneath. Uh, Mulfra right now and uh, it did say I had a notice on that uh, gate no unauthorized vehicles beyond this point which possibly means that uh, I could be entering motorcycle scrambling territory here but, uh, and it's weekend so let's see what happens okay the scenery is getting starting to look a little bit more wild now there's the Ardith did we weigh? And that uh, this is a half mile long hill promontory here, and at the end of it is a prehistoric hill fort which I've never seen. And uh, okay, so uh, this this part of the track from here on I haven't videoed before, so it's new territory on the, uh, the video uh, recording. There's that hillside forest, and just uh, well, unfortunately the sun's just uh, gone in, but. Uh, See over there is uh, the remains of uh, 
uh, well, her house, Dean Neweth. It was um, a coach stop back in the 18th century when this was a, a major highway uh, that went over that uh, ridge. And then down here, and then Hunt of Harley. The sun's briefly gone in, and, uh, and uh, when that happens, the wind picks up a little bit. Uh, so you can see this is the upper Iskefin Valley there. That's uh, in Erdwin over there. And, uh, and this is this gravel track has been kept in condition because it services Hlyn Bodlin, which is actually the reservoir for Barmouth, the seaside resort of Barmouth. Over there, it's lost its round hill. Look, it's actually at the end of another ridge, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, okay, so it's gone, uh, gone cloudy. Uh, in the old days, there was a, was a footpath that went over that ridge down to Kum Nanko, and it's still kind of marked as a footpath on the map, but as a straight line, so the actual footpath is. Uh, <laughs> kind of disappeared but uh, it's easy enough to make your way up there and then of course there's a good track then going down into Coom Nanko. Okay there's that long track there coming from the end of that uh, uh, promontory ridge and at the end of that ridge is, um, is that hill fort which I may look at on the way back. There's the Mulvera the wind's picked up, unfortunately, so there's going to be some wind noise again. Okay. Uh, there's that track. I don't know if you can pick it out on the uh, side of that hill. That was the highway connecting Dorgechlai to uh, Harlech at one time, and there's a pack horse bridge down there, so I can't quite pick it out. Uh, the cross is the Escapin, an 18th century pack horse bridge. And there's Hlyn Bodlin. So, um, uh, well, uh, I'll go, there's the dam at the end, and that's where I'll have a break and uh, survey the uh, scene, uh, which is, uh, well, it's a lot, well, the sun out, it looks fairly mild, but it's, it, it, it is quite wild up here. Okay, I've reached, uh, I've reached Hlyn um, Bodlin, and there's that promontory, uh, that, uh, well, not the, well, at the end of the promontory is what I believe is a, a prehistoric hill fort. I don't know if that's just a pile of rocks or... Uh, I've never been there, but I'll call in and have a look on the way back. Usual notice, no diving or jumping. And uh, this is why this track is maintained to uh, <coughs> service this reservoir. you get away from the mountains it's wall-to-wall -wall sunshine but the mountains attract their own uh, kind of climate in a way uh, especially big mountains so you get these clouds forming at the top uh, there, now there's uh, that's Craig uh, Bodlin I think there are some rock climbing routes on it uh, Craig Doolin oh, uh, sorry Bodlin it's um, in the shadow uh, and I think I'm going to move over into the sunshine. Looks like it's, there's a bit of a break. The sun's going to come out for, a, well, for three or four minutes anyway. And uh, there is another lake a bit further off the valley. Uh, Lin Dilin. Yeah, so it, uh, yeah. and that, that's, uh, that's a, 
Well, I won't go up there, but it's, uh, it doesn't look too bad. There's, I don't think there's any footpath going up there. But, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll just go back into that bit of sunshine and have a break, I think. It is uh, Craig Bodlin in shadow, I'm afraid. Okay, I'm leaving uh, the, uh, the lake across this uh, metal footbridge and uh, return back the way I came. Okay, say goodbye to Lynn Bodlin and it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of sunshine for a while. There's the road, there's all the track that goes away in the distance there. Bridge can't quite pick it out. It's uh, yeah, an 18th century stone bridge out in the middle of nowhere. It's servicing that uh, hillside track that goes up the Lawlich Ridge. Okay, I'm going to briefly uh, leave the track and cross this rough ground to see what remains of the coaching inn from the 18th century. The coach road that serviced this uh, coaching inn has long, long disappeared. There's no sign of it. Uh, and uh, you can see it's, uh, well, I think this is the first time I've actually been up and inspected this building, or what remains of it. Okay, doorstep, doorways, and uh, two rooms. There's a good fireplace. And the side of uh, the roof. <laughs> and uh, In a kind of an enclosure, I imagine, for the for the horses. Okay, looks like there's about four rooms altogether, including a small room. There's a like a, something to attach a, a door to. Still, still, uh, yeah, still there after a couple hundred years. It's a, of course, there's it's just a jumble of. But, um, yeah, all right. Yeah. So, I never actually can't remember being, look, looking at it a bit close. So what I'm going to do now is the next one. It's, uh, it's about a half a mile extra walk, or maybe more. Have a look at what, if I can see any remains of a hill fort somewhere over there on the end of a, of a promontory. I'm back on the authorised track here. And, uh, look if we can, I can see a star in the distance. It's about a half mile out to the end, so it's about a mile round trip. Now, that, that was uh, when I was, um, well, about uh, 19 years old, 18 or 19 years old. Me and my brother Cliff, who was only about 11 years old, yeah, that, we, we, he, uh, that's why we climbed Mul Mulver. We went off to the edge of that uh, woodland there, right up to the top. I seem to remember it was, uh, <laughs> I was young, but um, I don't think I was particularly fit. But he was a, a kind of a hole to get up there. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's beautiful countryside here. Oops, there's a party of walkers coming up. standing stone. There is one marked on the map and that could well be a standing stone. Okay, there's no actual footpath here but it's not too bad underneath. Now I'm 
hope you can hear me because the wind's quite picked up quite a bit and it's kind of blowing a near gale. Uh, there's a stile up ahead and uh, there is a semblance of a footpath along here. Okay, I'll remain. I've uh, reached what remains of the hill fort. Looks like it's just a pile of stones. And uh, one other thing, the motorcycle scramblers have arrived as well. Uh, I'm hoping they carry on going. Looks like a semblance of walls around here. But it's all uh, largely a jumble. This looks a bit more interesting. There's a, definitely a wall there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see these walls from the track. Or they're kind of... Uh, but uh, yeah, so that, that our remains. Yeah, I've been there. I think 500 years BC. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know, Bronze Age maybe. It's a good position. You can see all around you. Now that, that perch boulder may have been there when prehistoric man occupied these premises. Okay, this looks like a, a, an entrance to a room of some kind. Uh, I assume this is all part of the fort. There's that perch boulder. And uh, this looks like, uh, this is where I came in, it's an entrance. Those motorbike scramblers are somewhere over there. You can't see them, but you can certainly hear them. Okay, I'll have a break here. It's fabulous scenery. I think, well, if they, I think they found a spot there somewhere, just out of sight in a dip where they are going backwards and forwards and they'll do that for hours trying, you know, uh, well, honing their skills uh, motorbike scrambling skills Back on the track The uh, normal inhabitants That's the end of this walk, an excellent walk really. Um, one or two little uh, noise problems, but other than that, no problem. So, uh, yeah, okay. There they are. They're the culprits. A whole bunch of them. I just about beat them to it. Don't take any notice. The uh, the regulations. <laughs>